this is the second time that I've worked with Shiv simply because the first engagement worked out so well. And so I think that once you get the sense for how, how to SaaS can help sort of transform ineffective marketing organizations into effective ones, um, you know, as a CEO, you don't have to be the brightest guy in the world to know like, okay, like I like to go back to, um, to, uh, to people and to teams that you can trust to deliver. So this is engagement number two for us. I run private equity backed companies. And if you look at the, um, the history of our companies, they tend to be initially smaller, more founder led organizations that we now come in and are in the process of trying to rapidly scale. Scale takes many sort of forms and flavors, but one of them, particularly when you think about go to market or sort of the commercial parts of these businesses is really about how things like functions like demand generation and brand building become more process driven versus more individual heroic catches catch can kind of, um, exercises. And it's what we find in most of the companies that we acquire. And, um, and to sort of, you know, at a headline level to keep it simple, you know, what the, how to SaaS team has done for us is transform these marketing organizations from individual inconsistent sort of, um, people driven organizations to process driven ones. This is a business that has a terrific product. Um, and if you look at the customer satisfaction scores of our product or our platform, they're off the chart, like, you know, that from a net promoter standpoint, they're plus 55, which, you know, there aren't too many situations I've walked into where um, the product feedback, you know, the customer feedback has been that good on the product. So, you know, that's a clear expression of value created by the platform. The problem is not very many people know about Intellirad. And if you looked, you know, what we did when we came in, we looked at sort of, okay, what does the demand generation process look like? This is a company that is a double digit, you know, consistent sort of, 15 to 25% organic growth company based on the quality of the product and a bit of word of mouth. Um, but when you looked at the sort of demand generation approach, everything, even before, like before the pandemic, everything was event driven and literally sort of boiled down to one or two key events a year. I mean, it is not an exaggeration to say that the top couple of events, um, that they would focus on on the calendar each year drove 85 plus percent of the pipeline for the year. I've never seen that situation before. So then, you know, you get a new private equity owner in 2020, you get the pandemic, which clearly had a profound impact on, uh, on in-person events. And all of a sudden as a company, what do you do? Like, I think there was quite a bit of panic that, um, that instantly took place around how are we going to generate demand to keep the organic growth trajectory that the business has historically had. And it, it became almost like a forcing function to then have to sort of come to terms with the fact that you have to build a more, a more robust and more scalable and consistent pipeline generation process and a customer engagement process. And so, you know, that was sort of the context that led to, Hey, we've got a problem and then it's okay. Who can go fix this problem? And, uh, and this is again, where, um, haven't had the prior experience. Get a good sense that how to SaaS was going to be able to help. It's amazing to see how the science of marketing has changed so much over the years. And so, yeah, the, the science of marketing, in my opinion, is only as good as the underlying data. And it is difficult to find help that, um, they don't want to just sort of teach you the science, but they're willing to sort of go and figure out the data and the quality of the data, what the gaps are and ultimately how to get it transformed into a way that it becomes meaningful. That's you know, clearly one of the things that we've leveraged Shiv and the team to be able to do. I mean, I think the, again, consistent with what I said before, when you're acquiring mostly founder led organizations, you tend to find, let's just call it less than perfect, um, data in the business. And so, uh, even before you can get to the sort of sexier things, like how do we want to think about content marketing and account-based marketing and, and some of those sort of digital demand generation programs to drive pipeline and that kind of thing, you fundamentally got to go in and understand the data. And that's, if I think about where we started, that's where a lot of the early value was created was just normalizing and cleaning the data to then be able to build those kind of programs on top. When you're taking an organization 
that you were trying to rapidly scale and you're in the midst of transformation. It wasn't like we had all the seats on the bus filled. We had a fully staffed marketing organization and, um, and all of a sudden we had a third party come in that started telling people what to do, right? Um, in this particular instance, what we really did is we needed, we needed somebody who could come in and almost help operate as part of the marketing organization. And actually you go even a little further to say lead parts of the marketing process. And I think finding a third party group or consultancy that um, has the, both the capability to play an operating role and the desire, quite frankly, to play an operating role you don't find, you know, not all consultants are willing to do that, right? They, you know, they want to get paid for their expertise and their opinions, and they'll do the research only to sort of drive to a natural outcome that is, here's the plan that you should go execute. The thing that I think um, that we've benefited from is the, uh, you know, the, the willingness by Shiv and the team to, you know, to help sort of come in and help us run things and partner with me to help go hire and fill some of these key roles that ultimately then we'll be able to scale the marketing organization going forward. So from that perspective, we've been lucky that, you know, that we're working with a group that I think has the operational um, chops in addition to just the, you know, the, the functional experience. I, I was thinking it was green shoots, right? I think we still got a long way to go, but it's the early identification of green shoots. And I think, you know, the expertise, um, that the how to SaaS team brought, you know, to be able to walk in, look at the existing, you know, the example would be the existing website and where traffic is coming from organically and inorganically and based on their prior experiences, make a couple of very quick recommendations that allowed us to go, hey, look, like there are a couple of green shoots there and, you know, and then be able to, um, in a very controlled manner, decide, okay, if we, you know, if we increase spending by 10%, what do we get? If we increase it by 20 and, and sort of build into it, makes it easier for me to go to my board and say, look, you know, this isn't a, let's go spend a million dollars all at once and hope that something better occurs. This is a, we're gonna, you know, sort of A, B test our way to Bright as we go based on a set of experiences that, um, that we were able to bring in in the form of this partner. Um, and, you know, the team is running the experiments as we go. And so I think the identification of those early green shoots based on um, the experience that Hadassas had, like for us, that gave the team, it gave the internal team confidence, right? Because a big part of this, and you bring in a, you know, I don't, any kind of third party or vendor or consultant, um, what you don't want is an organ rejection, right? The, the core organization goes, yeah, yeah, but they constantly sort of keep them at arm's length that they don't, they don't believe that you'll create value because you just don't understand our, our market or our space. I think um, those barriers got broken down very, very quickly. Um, and that obviously leads to, you know, to a faster return on investment. So those are the things that I think have been encouraging is just sort of the early green shoots around um, what was driving traffic for the business today, ways that we could quickly and relatively inexpensively just show that there was a better way to do it or better ways and opportunities to do it. And I think now we're, we're taking that same sort of mentality from, you know, just the website and some of those early um, online sort of processes. And now we're applying them to things like content and, and ultimately to, to account-based marketing. I think the account-based piece is new. Like if you look at sort of the way Intellirad has historically done it, again, it just wasn't part of their playbook for how to scale the business and thinking about um, things like share of wallet and the opportunity to scale individual customers as a way of growing and scaling the business. Um, and that's a very specific, you know, there, there are very specific plays that you can run that ultimately will tell you what to market to whom and when and how to take advantage of you know, your existing data on customers to be able to put yourself in a position to grow to grow their business. And I think that's an entirely new motion for us. It's one that you know, we're still obviously very, very early days here. And, you know, and even the identification of that um, with, um, with the How to SaaS team and sitting down and looking at what we, you know, sizing the size, sizing the opportunity there um, so that we could justify uh, making some investments. Just that process was pretty eye-opening. And as a result now, like if I think about the open roles that we have in the business, 
we're now looking for people that have that kind of experience that can come in and on the back end of this project, be able to continue to evolve and grow what we do in the account-based marketing space. So it's, it's a long-winded way of saying like, that's another new muscle that we will build as a result of this engagement. We are affecting this transformation and trying to put in place a foundation to scale a much larger business. And so if I think about sort of the, the outcomes at this point in time, you know, one of the, the biggest ones for me as a CEO is I have higher confidence in how to um, structure and size an appropriate marketing budget for the organization going forward based on the work that we've done now in the last three or four months. And that's, you know, again, I think now I can say to the board, uh, to my investors with confidence, hey, we're gonna spend on these three areas of the business. We're gonna start with this level of investment. Here's the return that we expect that we'll be able to get from it. And now we'll be able to play it out as we go through um, the next, you know, three, six months to see sort of which one of these bets are playing, you know, are worth doubling down on and, and which ones might not be. That's not an insignificant outcome considering we're in the midst of a budget year, like we're in the middle of our budget year. Most of the time you, know, you get companies that have gotten to this stage and they go, okay, well that, that all sounds really good, but I have no money until the beginning of next fiscal year. I got to build that into the next budget. We were able to take this early work, bring it to the board and show them, here's the way we're going to do this going forward and get approval to go now try and test out some of these, some of these bets in year that ultimately will make us smarter going into the next fiscal year. So even though it seems pretty foundational, the, um, the confidence that we have in the categories of marketing spend and the hypotheses that I think we are putting in place that we can now go test to see its impact on driving pipeline and ultimately conversion. I think all of that foundational rigor is the output that we've seen, that we've seen so far. Try to be, I'll call it sort of painfully narrow in, um, in the outcome that you want to get first. Like really go into it thinking about what are your, lots of organizations have lots of pains and things that they want to accomplish. What's most critical to you and what are you going to do with the data? Like what are you really trying to achieve? We spent you know, an hour the other day debating like all of these metrics that we could show our sales force. And at the end of the day, I kept asking like, what are we going to do with it? Right. Ultimately, if we're not if we're not clear on how we're going to use the data to get better to drive more sales with a you know better ROI, then why would we waste the time to measure it? And I think when you go into these types of engagements, I think there's a natural desire to go, oh, we found somebody who can help us, and then you want to throw everything at them all at once. My advice would be start what really what matters most to you, because I think if you can put points on the board in these kind of engagements, not only do you get good shareholder outcomes and, and reasons for your investors to want to spend more, um, but you also win the hearts and minds of your employee population, right? They see this as a value added effort and they see it as a team they want to engage with. And then that's how you ultimately drive scale. So really be prioritized and disciplined, I think is the message on um, what you most want to get out of it and start there.